pandemic was a tough time for pro wrestling, with some promotions introducing crowd restrictions, others operated behind closed doors, and some closed altogether. But one promotion that was able to ride through the pandemic and actually grow was World Wondering Stardom. The Japanese Joshi promotion experienced a level of growth over the past few years that now has them as the second most popular Japanese promotion. The company arguably has the most stacked female roster, not just in the world today, but throughout wrestling history, and it's only expected to further strengthen with the arrival of the former Sasha Banks. So with the growth of fans looking to add stardom to their lists of favourite promotions this year, and with a new champion at the top of the mountain, what better time to provide a look into what makes stardom one of the fastest growing promotions in the world? I'm Jamie Ross of WrestlePurist, and this is our 2023 Stardom Guide. For more pro wrestling videos and podcasts, please subscribe to WrestlePurist and give the video a thumbs up. A quick history lesson before we get into the modern landscape of stardom. The company was founded in 2010 by former All Japan Women co-producer Roshi Ogawa, retired pro wrestler Fuka Kakamoto and Joshi wrestling legend Nanai Takahashi. The company is currently owned by Bushi Road, making it the sister promotion to Japan's biggest pro wrestling company, New Japan Pro Wrestling. Whilst Ogawa no longer has ownership of stardom, he still serves as the company's executive producer and can regularly be seen at ringside and regular press conferences. Now that we're up to speed with how stardom came to be, let's break down the talent that makes their show so special. As is the case with many Japanese promotions, stardom is heavily faction based, with almost all of their roster being a member of a group, each having their own identity. Whilst the majority of the roster aren't clearly defined by the typical babyface or heel character types, there are two factions that stand out as being on opposite ends of that spectrum. Firstly, however, let's break down the two top stars that stand alone at the time of me making this video. Kairi, previously known as Kairi Hojo in her first run with the company, and then later as Kairi Sane during her time with WWE, made her stardom return to the delight of fans last year after weeks of teasers leading up to the expiration of her WWE contract, and has since been on a run of form second to none. The inaugural IWGP Women's Champion makes infrequent appearances for the company, operating on a schedule comparable to WWE's Brock Lesnar, as she's often saved for the grandest of stages. Kairi's most recent run has only further added to her legendary status within the promotion, having brought the eyes of Western fans with her upon her return, leading to a historic Wrestle Kingdom 17 match with Tam Nakano, a monumental moment for Joshi Wrestling on Japan's biggest event of the year. Stardom's latest addition to their immensely talented roster is Mercedes Monet, formerly known as Sasha Banks in WWE. The former multi-time WWE Women's Champion made their NJPW debut at Wrestle Kingdom 17, challenging Kairi for the IWGP Women's Championship in a match that recently took place at Battle in the Valley on February 18th. Mercedes' attire during the match was a touching tribute to the late great Hannah Kimura, a shining star that the wrestling world sadly lost all too soon, but one whose legacy was carried forward perfectly in this one. The bout more than lived up to expectations, with Monet proving herself once again to be head and shoulders above the rest of the American women's wrestling scene, ultimately coming away with the title. Just how many dates Monet is expected to work in Japan remains to be seen, however with her undeniable star power and in-ring ability that arguably stands above any other American women's wrestler in history. The CEO is an extremely exciting signing that has the potential to propel stardom higher than they've ever been before. Now onto the factions. Stars, led by stardom's icon Mayu Iwatani, are the franchise players of the promotion and act as the de facto baby faces regardless of who they're in the ring with. Iwatani herself was part of the initial trainee class back in 2010 and has since become one of the greatest women's wrestlers of all time. Having held every title that's been available to her during her 13 plus years competing for the company, Iwatani is undoubtedly on the promotion's Mount Rushmore. Iwatani recently captured New Japan Pro Wrestling's IWGP Women's Championship from Mercedes Monet at All-Star Grand Queendom, and she's likely to be amongst the upper echelons of the roster until the day she calls it quits. Alongside Iwatani, the faction consists of Hazuki and Koguma, who regularly team as Fukuoka Double Crazy, Saeeda, Hanan and Momo Kogo. Stardom's top heel faction, Oedotai, is the promotion's oldest unit, having been formed in 2015 by Stardom legends Akti Asakawa and Kyoko Kimura. The group is currently led by Natsuko Tora, a powerhouse willing to do anything it takes to win. Whilst Tora has yet to ascend to true main event status in stardom, it feels like only a matter of time before her and her devious gang of misfits rise to the top of the company and grab singles gold. Adotai is also home to top stars such as Starlight Kid, Momo Watanabe and Saki Kashima, all of whom are respectable singles competitors in their own right. Whilst lower down in the pecking order, we have Ruaka, Fukigen Death and Rina. The faction is also home to Haruka Umasaki's alter ego, Karma. However, I plan on delving deeper into their relationship with the group in a more in-depth video coming soon to the channel. Stardom's resident tweener faction, Queen's Quest, was formed in 2016 by former World of Stardom champion and current WWE superstar, Io Shirai, and is currently led by fellow former World of Stardom champion, Utami Hayashista. 
Hayash just burst onto the scene in late 2018 and was deemed a super rookie thanks to the undeniable ability she showed almost instantaneously. Having reigned as a stoic, unbeatable champion for the majority of 2021, Hayashi spent most of last year diving deeper into her character work, resulting in more comedic moments such as her impersonations of Tam Nakano. After a relatively quiet year compared to her standards, it wouldn't be too surprising to see Hayashi move back up to the top of the card this year and make a claim for one of the company's top prizes. Utami is currently flanked by the former record-setting Wonder of Stardom champion Saya Kamatani and the high-speed ace Azumi, making for a top trio featuring a powerhouse, high flyer and a technical genius. The group also includes two pandemic era stardom dojo graduates, Lady C and Miyu Amasaki, with Hina, the twin sister of Rina and younger sister of Hanan, being the youngest member of the group at just age 16. The first of three factions that were born out of another, Cosmic Angels originally began life as a subgroup of stars before walking their own path in late 2020. The group is led by the self-proclaimed top kawaii of the cosmos, Tam Nakano, who currently holds both the Wonder of Stardom and the World of Stardom Championships, and is unmatched at bringing emotion into each of their matches. Nakano frequently teams Teams with the high-speed fairy Natsupoi as Meltier, with recent signee Soriano rounding out the group's full-time members. The freelance group Colors, consisting of Saki, Hikari Shimizu, Yuko Sakurai and Rina Amikura are also fully-fledged members of the unit, however they appear less frequently than their full-time faction mates. The same can also be said for original member Unagi Sayaka, who now finds herself competing across various independent Joshi promotions as well as in the United States. Moving on to Cosmic Angels as mortal enemies, Donna Del Mondo. The faction was formed in early 2020 by the former World of Stardom champion Julia and was initially the most dominant force in the promotion until a rift formed between their two top stars in early 2022. Julia's star power has been undeniable since arriving in stardom following their controversial ice ribbon exit in 2019. Although having lost the company's top prize to her number one rival early into her reign, it'll be interesting to see how the rest of 2023 pans out for the dangerous queen. Elsewhere in DDM, the group's resident powerhouse Micah now looks set to embark on a fully focused singles run after the retirement of her longtime tag team partner Himeka, whilst fellow Ice Ribbon alumni Tekla primarily operates in the high speed division. Finally, Mai Sakurai, formerly of Cosmic Angels, is typically seen as a group's pin eater, although she's been improving drastically as of late, surprising many by reaching the final of this year's Cinderella tournament. Transitioning into the second faction to have been born out of another, God's Eye is led by one of Donna Del Mondo's original members, Shuri. The former strawweight queen of Pancras and UFC fighter reigned over the promotion with an iron fist as the World of Stardom champion throughout the entirety of last year, before falling to her former tag team partner, Julia. Shuri has immediately bounced back, however, having recently defeated Sendai Girls as Chihiro Hashimoto at All-Star Grand Queendom via Knockout. Suri was initially joined by the imposing Ami Surai when forming the unit, with fellow former DDM member Mirai later declaring her intent to follow Suri into the new faction. New Blood also provided God's Eye with additional members last year, with JTO's Tomoka Inaba and Diana's Nanami taking the total number of members to five at the time of me making this video. Stardom's newest faction, Club Venus, is the third to have been born following a split from another established unit. The group was founded by the former Wonder of Stardom champion Mina Shirakawa in December of last year, although it wasn't until mid-April that the group finally decided to break away from Cosmic Angels. Alongside Mina, fellow former Cosmic Angels member Wakasukiyama is the only other Japanese member of the stable to date, with the rest of the group consisting of Mariah May, former NXT superstars Zaya Brookside and Jesse, and Australia's Xena. To close out this section of the video, it's worth pointing out the rest of Stardom's current factionless roster members, including notable outsiders, recent signees, and the most recent trainee class. Firstly, former Goddess of Stardom champions, 7up, consisting of freelancers Nanai Takahashi and Yu, frequently make appearances for the promotion, with Yuna Mizumori also considered to be aligned with the pair. This alliance is likely to be short-lived, however, as Mizumori appears to be on more of a permanent deal than the aforementioned duo, and has her eyes set on a move to Cosmic Angels. Suzu Suzuki, formerly a freelance deathmatch group, Prominence, recently announced that she will be making Stardom her full-time home. Having stood out as a future star in her handful of appearances thus far, Suzuki is likely to be one of the company's most important assets moving forward. Another recent acquisition is Mei Sera, formerly known as Mei Hoshiki. Following an absence from the ring spanning almost two whole years, Sera returned to pro wrestling at All-Star Grand Queendom and looks set to become the promotion's next high-speed superstar. Finally, the company's latest class of rookies all currently find themselves factionless at the time of this recording, although this is likely to change over the coming weeks and months. Hanako currently stands as Joshi Wrestling's tallest competitor at 181cm and has found success thus far teaming with Stardom's former resident giant Lady C, whilst 
Aya Sakura stands out with her karate background and is seemingly looking to have a trial run with each faction before she joins one permanently. Minami Komomo is yet to debut following an injury, although it appears her sights will be set on the high speed division when she's ready to step into the ring. Now that we've familiarised ourselves with Stardom's roster, let's get into the championships they fight over. First beginning with the company's top prize, the World of Stardom Championship. Also known as the Red Belt, for reasons I'm sure you can work out, Stardom's number one championship title is currently held by Tam Nakano and almost always headlines their pay-per-view outings. Previous champions include the likes of Io Shirai, Mayu Iwatani, Utami Hayashista, Shuri and Julia, and thanks to a phenomenal run of recent champions, has quickly become the most prestigious title in all of women's wrestling. The wonder of Stardom Championship, often referred to as the White Belt, is comparable in stature to New Japan Pro Wrestling's old Intercontinental Championship, and that it is similarly treated as a top title, however it all almost always takes the co-main event spot should the red belt be up for grabs on the same show. Tam Nakano recently captured the title from Mina Shirakawa to become Stardom's second ever double crown champion alongside Mayu Iwatani, with the likes of Kairi, Momo Watanabe, Julia and Saya Kamatani having also previously held the championship. Stardom's tag team titles, the Goddess of Stardom Championships, are currently held by God's Eyes Mirai and Ami Sore, known collectively as the New Eras. Following a dominant 7-up reign, the titles are now within the hands of full-time roster members once again, with challenge is already lining up for a shot, including Club Venus's Mariah May and Xena, as well as Natsuko Tora and Momo Watanabe of Oedo Tai. Stardom's trios titles, the artists of Stardom Championships, are notable for all three of the titles being a different colour. The current champions at the time of this recording are Donna Del Mondo's Julia, Tekla and Mai Sakurai, known together as Bari Bari Bombers. Stars as Mayu Iwatani and FWC are seemingly being lined up as the next challengers for the gold, although with Stardom's faction-based roster, there's unlikely to be a shortage of teams vying for the titles in the near future. Moving back to singles titles, the High Speed Championship was originally established in 2009 within the Neo Ladies Pro Wrestling promotion. However, upon the company's dissolution in 2010, Stardom acquired the rights of the title and it's been a mainstay ever since. The title, featuring a cheetah on the front so you know the wrestlers are really fast, is currently held by Oedo Tai Saki Kashima following over a year of dominance from Azumi. With Queen's Quest High Speed Bomb Girl seemingly moving away from the division for the time being, it'll be interesting to see who steps up in her place, with recent signee Mei Sera likely to be at the front of the queue for a future title match. Other wrestlers that frequently compete in the high speed division include Starlight Kid, Natspoi, Koguma, Fukigen Death and Tekla, although there are no explicit limitations on who may challenge for the gold. Speaking of limitations, Stardom's SWA World Championship proved difficult for the company to utilise during the pandemic due to the rules stating that the champion can only defend the title against challengers from another country. The title is currently vacant after being relinquished by Mayu Iwatani in November, with the future of the belt currently up in the air. Previous champions include the likes of Tony Storm, B Priestley, Jamie Hayter and Tekla, with the latter recently stating that she loved to hold the title again should Stardom decide to reintroduce it, whilst the likes of Mariah May and Zaya Brookside of Club Venus would also make for adequate challenges due to their British nationality. The final singles title up for grabs in Stardom is the Future of Stardom Championship, currently held by Oedo Tai's Rina. The rules of the title state that the champions and challengers must be either below the age of 18 or have less than three years of wrestling experience, and though should the champion no longer meet these requirements during the reign, they will be forced to relinquish the title. Since the formation of the New Blood brand, the title has essentially become the YouTube show top prize, with the likes of Miyu Amasaki, Hina, Wakisukiyama and many more all looking to grab their first taste of championship gold. Finally, Stardom's most recent additions to its championship hierarchy are the New Blood Tag Team Championships, currently held by the Oedo Tai tandem of Starlight Kid and Karma. With the title still being in their infancy, an established division of challengers is yet to emerge, although the likes of Lady C and Hanako, plus the rotating God's Eye cast of Mirai, Amisore, Tomoka Inaba and Anami are all likely to be in contention within the coming months. So now that we've covered the talent and the titles they fight over, let's take a look at how the company present their shows. Stardom typically hold two to three house show style events throughout the week, with these later being uploaded to their streaming platform, Stardom World. These shows essentially serve as the company's weekly programming in the build up to their pay-per-view events. These pay-per-view events are live on a separate streaming website before eventually also being added to Stardom World. Although title changes are rare on these weekly shows, they do still occasionally happen, and so they're always worth keeping an eye on, particularly with the frequency that Stardom builds up to their live shows. In terms of the pay-per-view shows themselves, the cards typically range between anywhere from 6 to 10 matches long, with shows almost always being headlined by one of the two main championships, with rare exceptions occasionally being made for bouts with major faction implications. At the time of writing, Stardom's pay-per-views are often only available with Japanese commentary, although there have been a few exceptions for some of the larger shows over the past few years, with pro wrestling Noah's Stuart Fulton and Stardom's own Sonny Gutierrez often on the call. This past year saw Stardom introduced two new brands that would each provide their own unique style and vibe to them. 
Firstly, New Blood, available for free on Stardom's YouTube channel, often airs every few months and spotlights some of the company's younger talents, such as Miyu Amasaki, Rina, Ruaka, and many more, as well as allowing other rising stars from across the Joshi wrestling scene to impress on the big stage. So far, wrestlers from Diana, PPP Tokyo, Gato Move, JTO, and the multitude of others has featured across Stardom's New Blood brand, and it certainly appears as if this won't be slowing down anytime soon. The brand debuted their first pay-per-view event, New Blood Premium, on March 25th in a show that saw the creation of the New Blood tag team titles, and thus the future of the company's developmental division looks bright. Similarly to New Blood, Stardom and Showcase also typically features talent from across the Joshi wrestling scene. However, these shows feature much more prominent anything can happen vibe to them. Thus far, Stardom and Showcase has played host to Falls Count Anywhere matches involving footballs and bouncy castles, casket matches featuring the Grim Reaper, and the infamous Cosmic Rules match, which is probably a story for another video. Unlike New Blood, these shows air on pay-per-view and are later added to Stardom World. However, audio from entrances are often removed from the delayed version due to copyright music being played by Stardom and Showcase regular DJ Pretty Dragon. Whilst I wouldn't say these shows are totally non-canon, as we've seen a faction created during its lifespan, major storylines are often overlooked looked on these shows in favour of pure chaos and shenanigans. Lastly, it's important to note that Stardom has a total of four annual tournaments spread across each season, each with their own prizes and opportunities on the line. This past January saw the beginning of the Triangle Derby, a round robin trios tournament with two blocks, culminating with the two winners of their respective blocks colliding for the opportunity to challenge for the Artists of Stardom Championships. Two points are earned for a win, whilst one point is scored for a draw, with this scoring system being replicated in Stardom's other tournaments that utilise this format. Since the spring of 2015, Stardom have held the annual Cinderella Tournament, a singles knockout style competition in which competitors can be eliminated via pinfall, submission or being thrown over the top rope, with the added caveat that the time limit draw results in both competitors being eliminated, thus heightening the drama. The winner of the tournament is granted one wish, which in recent years has often led to them challenging for the white belt, due to the red belt having a tournament of its own that we'll get to in just a moment. The most recently crowned Cinderella was God's Eyes Mirai, with previous winners before her being the likes of Saya Kamatani, Julia and the now retired Arisa Hoshiki. Moving into the summer and undoubtedly Stardom's biggest annual tournament, the 5 star Grand Prix is yet another 2 block round robin tournament that culminates in a singles bout between the 2 block winners with the chance to challenge for the red belt at the end of the year on the line. The event typically lasts throughout the majority of August and September and is often the host of several of Stardom's best matches of the year. Last year's winner Julia successfully challenged for the red belt at the end of 2022, proving how important the competition can be to cementing your place in stardom history and thus the five star GP is certainly a can't miss event on the pro wrestling calendar. Finally, stardom typically close out the year with the goddess of stardom tag league utilising the same format as the triangle derby and five star GP that we've previously mentioned. Last year's winners, 7up, went on to successfully beat Meltier for the titles in December. Previous winners include FWC, Momo Watanabe and Azumi and Io Shirai and Mayu Iwatani. And that just about does it for World Wondering Stardom in terms of the key things you need to know before jumping into the promotion. The roster has gone from strength to strength in the past few years throughout the pandemic, despite a tough period of talent departures before it, and with the recent arrival of Mercedes Monet, the sky is truly the limit for where the promotion could be elevated to in 2023. Their pay-per-view output is second to none in terms of in-ring quality and entertainment value, and that doesn't seem to be slowing down anytime soon. If you haven't done already, then take Stardom's icon Mayu Iwatani's advice and check it out. Thanks for watching our 2023 Stardom Guide. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a like and share it with a friend. Also remember to subscribe to the channel for more pro wrestling content and podcasts coming soon. We'll have individual videos breaking down each of Stardom's factions coming soon to the channel, as well as a bunch of content covering WWE, New Japan, AEW and pro wrestling companies from all over the world.